Hey everyone, this is Whitney from the Broken Token Podcast. We're excited to bring you one of the sessions that we recorded at the 2016 Southern Fried Game Room Expo held in Atlanta. And this session is entitled, Taking It to the Shop, Making an Old Pinball Game New. Now, one of the unique things about this particular video is that instead of being behind the camera, as you saw in the last one that we recorded, uh, me and my tripod skills may not exactly be the best, but instead of being behind the camera, Brent and I are actually in front of the camera on this session delivering the content. Now, Brent does the bulk of the delivery here. I mean, between the two of us, he's definitely the, the expert on pinball shopping and, and fixes and repairs, especially on the older pinballs as well, which is a lot of the content and the topics that he covers here. But he goes over a lot of the disassembly recommendations, the cleaning, the repair, uh, some field repair, and then also reassembly, and just really some good elbow grease type of wisdom on this topic. Now, we did a presentation uh, that accompanied the actual panel discussion itself. I've got that exported as a PDF file, and you can find that in the accompanying blog post on our website. Just look for a blog post that's entitled the same as the name of this panel discussion. You'll find everything there. The YouTube video will be hosted in there as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and turn it over to Brent. Let's learn some more about shopping your pinball. And if you guys are ready, I'm ready. So let's go ahead and blow up the logo and have some fun. Thanks. All right, so um, I'm Brent Griffith. I am the co-host of the Broken Token Classic Arcade and Pinball Podcast. Yeah, I'm Whitney Roberts, uh, the other half of the uh, Broken Token Podcast. And thank you guys for coming out today. We appreciate it. It's nice to see a full room of people. This is great, man. Everybody wants to hear about pinball, so that's awesome. <laughs> So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about pinball, and it's taking it to the shop, making an old pinball game new. So I'm hoping that there's something that everybody can take away from this. We're going to get a little detailed, but not super detailed. So, you know, the idea is... I'm running the slides here. Why didn't say to move? Oh, my, my bad. My bad. Yeah. But I, I, was, no. I was just advancing on the, you know, getting you ready, queuing you up. See what he has to put up with. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, it, hopefully we can have a little time for a little Q&A at the end. This is, I want to kind of stress this, this is the way I do it. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's the way that everybody else can or should do it. Hopefully everybody can take something away from this and it maybe will set you all in a direction or, you know, help to just help to work going through your first machine. I will freely admit that a lot of this is like the old like Ford versus Dodge versus Chevy truck conversation. Everybody has their favorite ways. And this is the way that I've, kind of the method that I have found that works for me to take a machine that I have just purchased, whether it was out of an operator's warehouse, out of an individual's home, from wherever, out of a garage, and get it to the position that it's a, a playing, nicely running, well-maintained machine. So. Uh, before we begin, some things to have on hand, some things to keep in mind. You need space. So, well, first of all, let me ask this. Who here has ever shopped their own game? Okay, so oh, that's okay. excellent. Cool, excellent. Cool. excellent. So we've got several people that have, but the vast majority have, have not. So just uh, show of hands, who has ever done just like a basic repair, whether it's a pop bumper or a flipper or anything like that? Okay, all right, awesome. Okay. So if you've never broken a machine apart, space is premium. It, you would be surprised at how much comes out of that, that machine and where, you know, how it will scatter far and wide. So make sure you have plenty of space, a basic set of hand tools. So screwdrivers, wrenches, um, you don't need really anything major, pretty much anything anyone has around their home, you can more or less work on a machine. Soldering iron, uh, we're not going to get into like board level type stuff, but I'll talk about that in a minute and why it's important to have a, a good basic iron. A digital camera or a smartphone, and we'll get into why. Printed manual is a big deal. Uh, I've done a few machines with just like f manuals from the web. It's doable, but a lot of times you lose the specifics of like part numbers and the like, and we'll talk about that. So if you don't get a manual with the machine, it, it's very helpful to hunt one down. My favorite thing, a notebook. I know Whitney is of the digital age. I, he's dragging me kicking and screaming into not writing everything down. When we talk about the me notebook on the show, that's a real thing. All right. So a Brent, notebook. Brent does drive an Edsel, by the way, <laughs> just to let everybody know. <laughs> Cleaning supplies, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, some spare parts 
and a lot of patience. A lot of patience. And um, the reason being for that is, is uh, going back to space, there's a lot of things. There's a lot that comes out. There's a lot of things that have to go back together in a specific way. And when it comes to tuning the game, you need patience to, to spend time with it to get it dialed in. And then optional, uh, a PC close by or tablet, we'll talk about that. And then some art supplies. So, all right, Whitney, next slide. So some semi-special tools, and this gets outside of what you might have like in an average home. Nut drivers. Seems to make sense. Hollow shaft nut drivers. A lot of your nut drivers, they're not, and you want a good quality set so that with a hollow shaft so that you can get into some of the posts and some of the other screws where you actually have the, the head farther down. So, you know, you, you've got a post. You've got to have the depth long shaft magnetic nut drivers. So I'd already actually done a few machines and they kind of look like this right up here on the right. Klein Tools makes a couple set, a set. You can get them from, from various vendors, Home Depot, Lowe's. They're nothing special. You don't have to order them. You can get them retail. A local uh, in Louisville actually brought those to my attention because he uses, they're usually over in the, where the electrical supplies are, like in a Lowe's and a Home Depot. Electricians use them. I had recently shopped a game, and I'm like, how did you get down three levels of plastics past a ramp and get that screw in? And he just pulls one of these out. Next day, I had to have a set, and it, it, it has been a lifesaver. A good soldering iron. So right there is a picture of a Weller uh, WSD-51, and this isn't for board level type work. This is so you can get in and change switches, replace coils, all right? And the reason I have a nice soldering iron, a nice temperature controlled soldering iron is if you're getting in and you're doing switches, and especially coils, you're going to need a lot of heat and you're going to need a nice temperature control so that you don't end up just forever trying to get that lug hot so you can change your coils out. They're not that expensive. That model runs about $130, $140. And then they have a model that's not digital that's even less than that. And then is it MCM Electronics, Whitney, that does the yes. tem Timna? Yeah, it's a Tenma is Tenma. what it is. Yeah, it runs around $20 or so. The only caveat with the, the Tenmas is unlike the Wellers, the Tenmas have a very thick cord and so they're hard to maneuver. They're, I would consider that like a second tier soldering iron, mm -hmm. but it's it's great if you could put it on a cart and haul it around and you don't need the ultimate inflexibility. The, it's temperature controlled and the price is right. Yeah, so if you're looking to just do some basic pinball repairs, I, I suggest that you go out and, you know, you're not looking for your non-temperature controlled couple dollar soldering iron. If you're working on a pinball machine, get a couple tools. You don't have to get super, super expensive stuff, but you would not believe how something as simple as that just saves a lot of time and a lot of frustration. And then along with that, some desolder braid and wicks so that you can you can uh, pull the solder off the coils. And we can talk a little bit about that later if anybody has any specific questions on how to use that stuff. But like I said, that that's under play field type for type repairs. We're, talk, we're staying totally away from board repairs at this point. It's stuff that any pinball, this thing pops like crazy. It's things that any pinball owner should have handy because it, it you can quickly fix a lot of problems and then finally and this is kind of an optional thing Whitney and I've talked about this on the show a little bit a media tumbler and this is just the Harbor Freight model those run about fifty dollars and it, I don't know do you all have Harbor Freight show of hands who's got Harbor Freights in their areas because I know they're not everywhere we those have, run, we have done our job oh yes we yes have. those run about fifty dollars and the media I use in them, well, we'll talk, actually talk about that a little later, but you, you don't actually get the media from Harbor Freight. It's kind of surprising where the media comes from. So, all right, Whitney, next slide. Oh, I don't know how I did that. That's solder braid. Man, you're stepping it up, dude. <laughs> that was an accident. There we go. All right, tools for uh, desperate times. <laughs> so when, when the frustration sets in, uh, there's always the chainsaw, and of course, if you're doing like a medieval madness or something, you want the oldie time axe there. So yeah, keep those handy. All right, next slide, Whitney. All right, so here's my basic um, uh, process for shopping a pin. So I'm gonna plug it in and assess the basic issues. I'm gonna do an electronics check. 
And if I find something, I'm going to go ahead and fix it. And as part of that, I'm going to exercise all the switches and coils. I'm going to strip the play field, order parts, and then while the parts are coming, that's when I clean. And honestly, that is where, on average, you're going to spend the majority of your time, is cleaning. Uh, touch up, if you feel so inclined, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Wax it, reassemble it, and then finally tune the game. All right, so assessing the electronics. Check the fuses. It seems silly, but check them, you know, really. And uh, be prepared. If there's a blown fuse, you stand an even chance that when you power it on, it's going to blow again, okay? So it's not a bad idea to say, okay, well, this fuse is for flippers. Kind of spot check the flippers. See if you have anything dangling, anything that's obviously shorted. You're just going to have to work through the issues, okay? And we can, we can dive in for hours on the electronic side of it, but let me just go on and say, just check your fuses, inspect all your connectors, most all of your modern games, anything that's solid state, you're going to have GI issues. You're going to know the connectors are bad because they're going to be brown. That's not good. Okay. A lot of times I'll find, we were talking about operator fixes in another panel, a lot of times I'll find the, the, uh, the GI connector pulled off and cut and then directly soldered to the board. So that's, that's not fun either. Yeah. So it's something, we'll, something to get into a little later, but just assess the electronics. Obviously the batteries, and uh, by the way, I use a lot of pictures off the internet, so if anyone here has actually published any of these pictures, thank you. I want to go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now. And sorry. <laughs> and sorry. Yes. Yes. I'll give you credit now. So uh, these are wonderful batteries. And they're starting to, uh, well, they're not started. They're in full blown corrosion. And they've almost kind of got that, that uh, beard thing going on. Check your batteries. If you bring a machine home, I'm going to end up falling over this. If you bring them, that's actually mine. I put that there. If you bring a machine home and you're not going to get to it for a while, open it up, pull the batteries out of it. If you're actually purchasing a machine and you know you're going to store it for a bit, before you fold it up, pull the batteries out of it. Because this can happen in, in short order. You know, you don't want, you don't want to kind of have to come back from a repair like this. So anyway, take note of everything that's not working and use any built-in built self-tests to go through all the, the switches and coils. And here's a picture. This is where a printed manual comes in handy. Oh. This is driving me crazy. Is this any better? There we go. A little less pop. All right. So this is where a printed manual comes in. Yes, thank you. yes, yes, yes. This is where a printed manual comes in handy. If and no one has ever s seen this, that's a, a, a switch matrix. So it will give you all the switch numbers. You can get into the self-test and exercise all the switches. So what I like to do is I'll copy that and then I'll just check them all off and that'll tell me if I've got a switch bad. All right. So I'll work through all that, and there's something similar in most manuals for all of your coils. So I'll get into the self-tests, and I'll activate all the coils, and then I'll mark anything that has problems, and then that's something that I know I need to work with later. And then finally, boards. Repair versus replace. So... Um, that's uncomfortable. No, that's oh. awesome. That's the ba that's, that's the that 60s awesome. Batman that ringtone, is, man. Awesome. Uh, props to you, sir. You 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 you, you won the session. <laughs> so repair versus replace. If you all listen to the show, okay. Here, should I say? Who here listens to the show or who here does not listen it, to the it's show? It's all on you, man. It, it depends who on whether you want to, to be pleasantly show. surprised or, or disappointed. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Yeah. I'd re this is great. Yeah, There's no, a lot thank, of folks here that you. don't. No, we appreciate it. And thank probably you. never will. Yes. <laughs> it's because they're like, he's an idiot. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about this on our show, Repair versus Replace. I'm a repair guy. I will fix the boards. I will fix battery corroded boards. If I've got driver boards with issues, I'll fix all those. A lot of people I understand that's not necessarily an avenue. First of all, it's hard to find someone that's reliable to work on machines. Second of all, is very easy and 
relatively inexpensive when you when you figure the time and the money into a repair to get an aftermarket board. And I know Rotten Dog, like um, if you go out into the, the the show floor, there is a full display of Rotten Dog boards on arcade shops table, and they look wonderful. My personal fear with those, because I've kind of been here with some boards on the arcade side, is if that vendor goes away, support for that board will go away. If that board is available, you want to and you get it. Make sure you get schematics and any information that you can get on that board, so that a year, two years, five years down the road, if that vendor has gone away, you've at least got some basis to maybe repair what you've got. Like I said, though, my personal preference is to keep the games as they were. Um, Everyone says there's shortcomings in this game and that game. Honestly, I find a lot of that is just due to time and age. And those weak spots take 30 years to come out. So a proper repair will take another 60 years in a home situation before they come out. I like to repair. If you replace, like I said, just kind of keep that in mind. All right, Whitney, next slide. All right, so we're going to strip the play field. And you want to take lots and lots of pictures. And, and I say this, and I really mean this. When you think you've taken enough, take a lot more. I have done several games where I just wish I had a slightly different angle on something. And what you're trying to capture, it's a little washed out in the lights here, but what you're trying to capture is the orientation of everything. What posts were used in what position. So if you take a look over here to the right, this is an Adams family. And this is the uh, uh, slingshot to the right side of the play field. And if you notice all the different post types, they're there. And here's a, this bottom picture is across the play field, both slingshots, the different post types, how they're fi affixed, the different screw types. And then just an overview picture here, the upper part of the play field where you can see all the, the metal work and how the ramps lay in. And this is a fun little area. This is the uh, going into the vault and you've got all the posts, all the little bits of metal work. Well, that's all great and fine in these, you know, on the game. And, but when it's all laid out and all the posts and all the screws just come out of a tumbler or some cleaning solution or they're in a bucket, it's it's not fun and and one of the things to really go ahead and hit the next one here's another example um this is a, a cue ball wizard and i was gonna say one of the things to really kind of look out for is a situation like like here this is the upper right and the upper left side of the cue ball wizard play field there's long plastics that go along uh, the top of these posts and well this this post doesn't have a stem on it and, but this one does, and it matches up to the plastic. And I don't know how many times I've stretched new rubber over a bunch of posts. And, you know, it's kind of fun to get it all on there and then realize that I have to take it all half apart because I've got, I'm, I'm one, I'm a tick off. This post should have been there or vice versa. One of the things to really look out for is washers. And I always keep a, a, a big thing of, uh, of extra washers lying around. And I'll use those to adjust plastics. You want nice flat plastics, and what you'll often find is even from the factory, the the posts are shimmed. So some of the posts will have a plastic right on the post, and some will have a washer and then the plastic on it. And like I said, you just take pictures of everything as you take it apart, so it helps you to put it back together. This is the right ramp on uh, Cue Ball Wizard. And if you notice, those posts are different diameters. You know, you can correct that later, but it's, it's not fun to, to build the game one and a half times. So take lots and lots of pictures. All right, Whitney, hit it. All right, so let's have a quick giveaway. So I've got a few things up here in these boxes. These are all from various kind of operator finds. Okay, don't open that. All right. I'll shoot you in the eye with this laser. <laughs> <laughs> Just sneak in. Not, sneak not in. to the left eye. That's huh? the one that I need. All right. Okay, so who here has had bought maybe their first pinball in the last six months? Nice. All right, let's take the gentleman here in the back. Yeah. Come here. Come up here. We got a, we got a quiz. All right. <laughs> this doesn't sound good. Okay, so. Had about two weeks. That's okay. Come here. It's it's really not so that hard. So just turn around, face that way. So here's here's the deal. I'm going to show you a picture, <laughs> and I want you to pick out. Go ahead, Whitney. Change it. I want you to pick out the part that is related to a pinball machine. 
<laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> you think it's the one on the right? All right, Whitney, go ahead and hit it. Uh, you, uh, not quite. It's pinball dog. All right, Whitney, and if you need proof, I mean, I had to work my dog in somewhere. All right, Whitney, the next one. That's right. That is the dome uh, that's used in a couple Williams games, including High Speed and uh, the F-14 Tomcat. So, all right, so here's what I got. Like I said, everything up here, I've got, you can't have this box, but you can have what's in it. I've got some uh, marquees that you can choose from. They're generic marquees. And... Uh, what's, don't eat it from that box. Whatever is in gotcha. that box. Oh, so whatever's you've got a choice. in the box. I got you can you. pick. You can, you can pick yourself a marquee. You can take what's in here, or you can take what's in there. This, this is very Mo Monty <laughs> Hall-ish is what it is. You want the box? You're going to go with the box. Okay. Are, so, are you sure? I've almost died twice just <laughs> trying to open it. Now, I had something else tucked around here. What happened here? It's, it's Don't in, open that. It's in here, though. Did you put... No? Huh? Don't open that. Oh, wait a minute. All right. All right. So, I'll trade you a dirty... Well, it's clean in there. A Papa Shot basketball and the contents of that for what's in that box. <laughs> You keep the box. All right. Okay. All right. He's got. The, remember, everything that it's, everything that's here. No, it's got some weight. Go ahead, and open it up. Everything that's here came from an op operator's warehouse. Go ahead and show everybody. <laughs> Set of four mugs. There's actually something in the bottom. And as a parting gift, here's 700 free hours of AOL. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs> All right, next slide. All right, so did I say take pictures? I mean, take pictures. This is the upper left and the upper right. This is uh, Dirty Harry. And just look at that mess. Look at all the posts, look at uh, right here on the in lanes, check out just where the different stud types are because there's plastics. This game has like a double layer of ramps and there is a whole series of these long posts down the side of the game. And I just got to the point where I was just taking a tape measure and taking pictures so I knew where everything went back. The bottom here is a Gottlob System 1 roller disco. That assembly is, uh, you know, just gates and posts and guides. And like I said, when you think you've had enough pictures, take more pictures. Every angle, take them from the angle of the ball, take them down, take them across, take pictures everywhere. It, it's just so easy. I've done several games with this phone. It's not like we have to have a digital camera anymore. So, all right, Whitney. Uh, this went too far. <laughs> this was a Matahari, <laughs> and this had the axe treatment. It, it was a Matahari. Yeah, it was a Matahari. So, all right, who wants to know what happened to this? <laughs> Look, there's like, <laughs> oh, it is so wrong. The cabinet was gorgeous. Um, this actually was operated at a school in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, it was broken into. They couldn't get into the coin door. And as it goes, they actually, there was a security guard. They tied the security guard up. And I hope they stole more than just the money that was in it. They couldn't, if they were going to tie a guy up, they couldn't get into the coin door, so they took a sledgehammer and went through the glass. Yeah, it was, what, once the dust is wiped off, it was, it's gorgeous. So I'm actually going to, it's going to go to some use. The cabinet has made its way out in the community. And I'm going to use that eventually to start practicing doing total clear coats. So have that opportunity. Anyway, all right. So yeah, don't disassemble like that. Ordering parts. Take notes as you disassemble. And again, the manual is just an, an unbelievable help here. Um, a lot of things appear okay until you disassemble. And I've run into this several times where I've, okay, well, the flippers are okay, or this is okay, or that's okay. And then I take something apart after I've made parts orders and bits and pieces come falling out. All right. Uh, one thing that I see a lot is like pop bumper bodies. Okay. You'll take the cap off and it'll have two screws in it. Well, one screw will come out and the other screw will take a quarter of the pop bumper body. It's still attached to the bottom of the cap. 
all right so you want to make sure that you go ahead and you just you everything that you can you strip off the top of the play field so one of the things like down here at the bottom i like to do as well is i'll break down the under play field mechanics okay so think of it kind of like this the top of the play field all right who knows everyone knows what a delorean is right all right i love deloreans i'm a the big back to the future fan i'm of that age delorean is a beautiful car even to this day and age under all that shiny goodness the car is crap think of the play field like that you don't want this beautiful gorgeous play field but everything underneath it is just kind of on the edge on the ragged edge so that all all those mechanics need to be addressed as well and like i said i like to go and i like to break down the under play field mechanics so slingshots pop bumpers even if i just take them apart take the coil out replace the uh replace the uh, uh sleeve because they're inexpensive wipe the dust out of them and just make sure everything's there um, check the speaker magnet because a lot of times when anything falls off of the game it ends up stuck to the speaker magnet okay when you clean the game out anything you find any screw any nut keep it because i mean some what's the chances of someone just randomly throwing a handful of hardware in there <laughs> it came from the game okay um so I find a lot of incorrect parts. I find a lot of stuff taped together. My on my Adams family, the one I had shown earlier, there's a there's a where where thing is, there's a big box under the play field, and there's a kicker in there, and it kicks the ball up probably eight inches to get it back up to the, the play field level, just under the play field. It takes it's a hard hitting coil. It takes a lot of abuse. Well, the bracket was broken. It was it was taped together with electrical tape. So look for tape. All right, Whitney, hit the next one. So here's a good example of an infield operator fix. So this is a kicker arm for a slingshot off of a Williams game. It's a Williams Big Guns. And on the left is the correct link. On the right is a flipper link. So somewhere in the field at some point in time, and this game was playing, and honestly, I went through the game, and um, I wasn't doing a deep cleaning and repair on it, and I, I noticed that. And then I started, in this particular game, doing more stuff, and then there were more little gremlins hidden in there. But, um, you know, if you, if you notice that, you know, there's a lot of gap in there because it's a bigger lug on a flipper. You know, the, the geometry is just is wrong. It's sloppy. You know, and it's, it's a couple cent part, but when this was in the field sometime, whenever, they probably just had a flipper link. They changed it, and they were making money. Always rebuild the flippers, okay? The so flippers are the interface to the game. And if you think about, uh, and if you've listened to our show, we, Whitney and I talk a lot about monitors and tuning monitors and control panels because that's the, that's your interface into the video game. Well, your interface into the pinball game is is the flippers. Nothing will kill your enjoyment of the game like weak flippers. All right. So I don't care what it is. I'll always rebuild the flippers instantly first thing on the list is a flipper kit okay one thing that i've noticed is is that the the vendors they don't include the bearings slash bushings or different people call them different things this is where the flipper bat rides through as it as the as it goes through the play field okay so they're just plastic and they'll wear and they'll oval out and those are the things that protect your play field because this sets the space under the flipper that keeps it from dragging up the play field who here has seen a game that's got arcs at the flippers that's why and these are really cheap like pennies okay so always rebuild your flippers get yourself a set of uh, uh, bushings or bearings whatever they're called for the game now here's a good example of something hiding you might play the game and think okay these flippers are pretty strong she's it's, it's a good game it's got good feel well this is a cool stop a good cool stop on there are relatively good it's got a little wear this cool stop has just been used and abused it's mushroomed it's had a lot of it's just been beat and if that piece of metal is is ha, has been beat to that point you know all the rest of it is is it's due because the rest of it the majority of it is plastic parts all right whitney place your order all right 
So wealth of vendors are out there. Marco, um, they're, they're the one of, if not the biggest, and they're a big sponsor of the show. They've got a great booth down here on the show floor. Pinball Life, uh, Bay Area, and of course, if you've got Gottlob stuff, the place to go is Steve Young's Pinball Resources. So show of hands, who's, who's ever ordered parts from any of these vendors? Okay, show of hands. Who's ordered parts from Pinball Resources? Okay, so kind of word of the wise, little tip. Uh, Steve's business is a smaller kind of mom and pop shop. Steve's a good guy, but Steve is direct to the point. When you call Steve, there's some laughing out here. If you've got a Gottlieb game, get the part numbers. Okay, Marco is is really good. I've had to do it. I've called up and it's like, I need this and I describe it. Oh yeah, okay, we've we've got it. We'll we'll help you out. Steve wants part numbers. When you call up, if you've already ordered from Steve, you'll have a, a, a purchase number or a, a, a customer number. Customer number, part and you start giving him part numbers. And that's the way it works. And he ships it to you and then you sh send him a check. Okay, is it, any video game people here? <laughs> Bob much, Roberts? Much like Bob Roberts. Yeah. Yes. Bob does all his stuff with email. You can do some stuff with Steve's shop through email. I've done some stuff. He's got some folks that work for him. But if you call, have your part numbers. And that's where you need the manual. Okay? All right. So, clean your heart out. Uh, and I mean that. Now that the play field's disassembled, clean the inserts. A lot of people don't think of doing this. Stand the play field up, pull the lamps out, take a Q-tip, clean the inserts out, and then when you and then put a new lamp in it. I suggest, if you're gonna do a machine end-to-end, -end, take every lamp out of the machine and throw it away. Working or not, throw it away. Now we can talk LEDs, that's a whole 14 hour discussion. But- yeah, And um, serious money too. I, it is, serious it is. Money. I, I've, I have not done LED an LED game to date because it's just gotten to the point where I, I'm pretty particular and I start to get into that, wade into that pool. I know Whitney's waded into that pool. I love that pool, man. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah he's, do. he's going to drag me in. I'm everywhere. I'm LED, OCD, and all this kind of stuff. And it's just, yeah. He's in the pool yelling, love save it. me, just so I'll jump in. Yeah, exactly. And so to date, I've, I do all, I've done all incandescents. And I just haven't dove in because there's just so many options. Needless to say, all the lamps come out. You might have working lamps, but that could be an original lamp, and it could be 30 years old. And you don't want that lamp three layers down, and it goes out, and you're a nice machine, and you got a, a dark spot in your play field. So uh, vacuum the play field. Vacuum the play field? Yes, vacuum the play field. I have, uh, it's not uncommon when you start pulling stuff off, you'll find bugs, you'll find uh pieces of cloth you'll find paper you'll i mean just 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 take a vacuum and vacuum the play field take that chance to vacuum the head out and of course the uh the body and keep any hardware all right so here's the process for cleaning novus uh-huh what if i use my stocking no <laughs> that that would just be weird that'd be weird yeah <laughs> Yeah. That, oh, yeah. Yeah, that is. So, so put like a put like a stocking or something over the end of it. So, yep. Uh, you're always it was, what, what's missing now. Yep. Absolutely. Good tip. So, Novus, you go ahead if you're, when you kind of have to have this ahead of time if you haven't already ordered it. But you know, kind of the 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 standby for cleaning a pinball machine is Novus one through three, one, two, and three. So, one is a spray. It's like the final cleaner. And what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll spray down a play field with it. So I've got some kind of tack, if you will. And that way, anything that's left that's kind of chunky, I can go ahead and pick that up with a rag. Don't use any kind of household cleaner. Okay. I've actually, there's a, there's a, a guy local to Whitney and I, I've never tried this. I'm afraid of it. I know he does it on every machine he's ever shopped, but he uses scrubbing bubbles. And he and he swears by it, and his machines are beautiful. But I, I 
I, I don't know. It so just, it just feels like a very caustic solution to use. It, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't know. I know it's not as rough as, but when I think scrubbing bubbles, I think like oven cleaner. Yeah, exactly. And I just, yes. I'm just, but he he swears by it. Yeah. So scrubbing bubbles, your mileage may vary. Um, melamine foam and rubbing alcohol is what I use to get in and do a nice deep cleaning. So melamine foam is the generic name for a magic eraser. All right, so I'm sure everyone is aware of a magic eraser. And keep in mind, basically a magic eraser is the equivalent of like 3,000, 2,500 grit sandpaper. So you, you don't want to get in there and really love that play field because you'll start pulling all kinds of stuff up. You, you, you're going to have to get a feel for it. You know, I, I spend a little more time working it than just diving right in with it. So what do you use to wet it? 91 plus percent alcohol don't use water water will get down into the play field especially on your older machines where um, your newer machines like a lot of your dmd machines there's already some co some protection on the play field but water will raise the grain it'll make it plank if anyone's ever seen a play field where they can see the vertical lines in the play field that's planking you don't want to use water so uh, i'll put on a set of rubber gloves from harbor freight and I'll go at it with some uh, alcohol and some melamine foam. And if you take a look here, I'm in the process on this roller disco of, uh, of cleaning. And I've done the left side and still was still working on it at the time versus the right side. So at this point, it's already been kind of wiped down. And I've started on it with uh, the melamine foam and started to bring the colors kind of back out and get get the uh, get the dirt out so a lot of times if you've ever seen on a play field what's called a ball swirl it'll look like little circles or almost little C's where the ball gets spinning and it'll make a little like a little cut for lack of a better term in the play field dirt will collect in those you can gently work a lot of that if not all of it out with a little alcohol and a, and a melamine foam so Novus 3 is the hardest, the deepest cut of the Novus line. So if you feel that you need to, go back over the play field, microfiber towel, and Novus 3. And you'll find that once you finish with the melamine foam, it'll be all kind of white and hazy. And that's where the foam's broken down. That's you know, some crud that's still left on the play field. We're in the process now of doing that final cleaning to get all that stuff out. If the play field's pretty rough, go at it again gently because three is the most aggressive, Novus three. And then um, I'll generally do a wipe off with the Novus one, spray it. Then back yourself down to Novus two and then finish off with a Novus one. So if you want, you can get a buffing kit. So uh, is it Treasure Coast? Tre uh, Treasure Coast? Treasure Cove. Cove, Cove. Treasure Cove. Cove. Treasure yes. Cove is one of the companies they offer this buffing kit. And it's like a buff, it's like if you're gonna buff a car, but it's it's a small buffer, a couple inch diameter, and you put it on a drill, and they have their cleaning solutions and their buffing solutions. And you could use that and buff the play field out and get just a mirror finish on it. So that's something I've never tried one of those. Has anyone here ever ever tried one of the Treasure Cove kits? Have you had good luck with it? Everyone that I know that has used one is has loved it and i just i just have not had the opportunity to pick one up and then finally now you're at the point where before you wax it if there's any touch-ups you want to do now's a good time to do it otherwise you're ready to wax it so all right so question So the question is, is what do you do if you you get that crackle? Are you talking about like the planking or the paint? It looks like a, like a starring effect. A crazing? Yeah, a crazing. Almost, almost kind of like a reptile skin pattern or something. Is that is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah, yes. yep. yeah, yeah, exactly. At, at that point, short of a complete touch-up of that area to repaint it, uh, depending on how bad it is, I mean, you can try to seal it in so that it doesn't get any worse. But honestly, it's kind of like uh, um, it's there. It's what it's going to be. You know, there. Oh yeah, you can still clean over it. But in an area like that, I would be I'd be a little 
extra careful just to, just so that you're not just like stripping all the paint off of it you know uh, I mean if it's going to come off it's going to come off especially with ball a ball running over it constantly but you know if you can help not make it any worse you know if you're not wanting to get into full-blown touch-up restoration you just kind of have to, to deal with it so Oh, you're talking about like doing a complete mylar overlay? Yeah. What I have done in small spaces, and actually this is a good point, I didn't think to put this in here. Um, if there's a place where the ball falls on the play field, like if you've got like a wire, this is touching on that, where like you've got a wire form that comes down to your in lanes and the ball's always dropping there. Once I've got the machine clean, if I touch that, generally that area is worn. If I touch it up, or even if I don't, if it's all, if it's still in good shape, I'll put a mylar square over it. Doing the whole play field. When you do that, you're in. You're locked in. There, there's a whole science to removing mylar from later, like Williams games, like System 11-ish type games. If you've got damaged paint, that you're not taking that mylar off. Okay, so the. Depends on how big the spot is, you know. If you, it, I've done it as well, where like on a uh, the entrance to a ramp, where I can where I can get to a point where it it there's a nice line of demarcation. I've done that and sealed it in, but I don't. I'd be hard pressed to do like the whole play field. Yeah. If for anything else, I think I would have more problem getting that mylar down and not getting anything under it and getting it position correctly and I think I would cause myself personally more problems than I've got with just some some wear spots honestly I mean, to me a lot of mylar on a play field changes it changes the look and the reflectivity of the play field and I to me I don't know I guess it's just personal preference but mylar always tends to look cloudy to me it looks a little hazy and I can spot it from a mile away and so it, I, I don't know I guess I look at it as kind of like a necessary evil at some point. I, I don't know. So. Sure. With planking, anything but wax, is there anything you can do? I have a jumping jack that we bought. You're into full repair. Well, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Still plays, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's You're into, yeah. There's nothing to really make to close that back up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, hardware. This is the media tumbler. And then on the left, are some before shots. I know this one on the upper left is kind of hard to see and on the right are the afters. So again that's that Harbor Freight tumbler. Crushed walnut is the media. You get that at a pet store. They put it in the bottom of like reptile cages. It's really really cheap. So what I'll do is I'll put all the hardware in a tumbler and I'll let that tumbler run several days and what kind of what I've done at my house and this type of tumbler it's not vented so you don't have to worry about a lot of you get a little dust but you don't have to worry about dust everywhere I actually put a, uh, um, a smoke detector in my laundry room which I should have already had for just because I was gonna start doing this because I knew it was gonna be running I never leave it running when I'm gone but like I'll let it run through the night anytime I'm at home so I'll give it a good 24 to 36 hours just running all that material and it will come out nice and shiny and squeaky clean just like you see there. What? Yeah. Mm hmm. So when you put all those pieces in, you put multiples in, there's no problem with them vibrating. No, no, I put all of it in. All yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll load that hopper as full as I can and just within reason. Yeah. yeah, as you're loading it, you'll know when it's too full. Yeah, it'll just, you'll just reach a point and it's like, that, that's enough. But uh, yeah, I just fired up and let it run. One thing I would add is, uh, you know, when you go get your tumbler, also get, um, also get a set of the foam rubber mats and then you can slice them with a utility knife and cut a small little pad for that tumbler to sit on because if, if it's sitting on your kitchen counter, if it's sitting on your wall, washing machine it doesn't matter what it's really sitting on you're going to hear it and it's going to walk and move and if you just just invest another dollar for that little rubber mat and that tumbler will sit there for a week and running no problem at all see mine sits on a concrete floor so i'm i've got a, a space where i can put it i don't um and you don't fill it all the way up you know you fill it i fill mine about half two-thirds of the way up and then just i put all the parts in there um 
and I know some people will add some polishing compound. I've tried it both ways. I just run straight crushed walnut and just me, let it roll. Me too. I've tried. I've tried the polishing media, and I know a lot of people swear by it. To me, it just makes a mess, <laughs> and it's just a hassle. So next slide. Make sure you put the lid on nice and tight. And I, d I actually double nut the lid down and don't put like a shooter rod. I put ball gates, everything in them. But if you put something long in there, it will literally start to vibrate into the side of the tumbler body and just it'll work its way right through the side of the side of it. So yeah, don't do like shooter rods or long, those long posts, sir. Or that wing nut will back itself off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So uh, plastics. Novus here again on plastics with art, like your slingshot plastics and all the playfield plastics. I'll do a number one on the underside, spritz it, clean it off. And if I've got something that's really brown, like from nicotine or the, you know, like it came out of a bar or it was on location, I'll use a little Windex. And you just test it, you know, because I'm sure that somewhere somebody's going to have a plastic that it's going to eat it. So take something in the far back of the play field where you wouldn't see it and test it. But honestly, I use Windex on almost everything. I clean video games with Windex. Windex is like my go-to other than play fields. Um, but Novus one on the underside and then uh, the two, which is a little aggressive if you want, you know, to try to maybe polish off the, t off the tops and then follow that up with the number one. And then later, if anyone's got any arced plastic, I know because we're actually, we're rolling through time here. If anyone's got any arced plastics, I can tell you how I can get with you and ask me and I'll teach tell you how I flatten plastics. Um, on solid color plastics, like your posts, your star posts, flipper bats, anything that's cast in a solid color with no screened art, mean green. So this isn't simple green or power purple or you know something orange or because there's all kinds of these things at Walmarts and Targets and all this. There's actually a Mean Green website and I think it's Dollar General carries. Is it Dollar General, Mike? Dollar General carries it. So if you've got a Dollar General close by, you can walk right in and buy it. And I'll take a little plastic container. Uh, I'll fill it. I'll drop, drop all my plastic in it all my posts, whatever I need to, to clean, I'll cover it, you know, a good inch or two over with mean green, and I'll just let it sit for several days. And all that rubber residue, all the crud, any caked in wax, it'll clean it out. And honestly, even what I started doing is I'll set it on the dryer. So when the dryer runs, it'll agitate it. Or I'll set it over on the AC unit. So when the AC runs, it agitates it. And I just forget about it for a couple of days. And when it's, when it's, when I'm ready to take it out, I'll pour all the mean green out. I'll pour water, shake it. You know, I just rinse it a few times and lay it all out on a towel and then assemble it. So you've not seen it whiten the plastics or nope. fade the color or anything? Nope. Yeah, cool. Nope. And that's why I say mean green, because I haven't tried anything else. So your mileage may vary if you get like super purple or something at Walmart. So, all right. Show of hands again. Who listens other than like the O'Shea's? We got a couple. We got a couple uh, plants over here. Who listens to the show? Matt. No. <laughs> Who else listens to the? All right. Um, on the left, you right there. Jill, right here. You. Yeah, put the laser on you. Come here. <laughs> all right, yeah, that'll work. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. All right. So, uh, how long have you listened to the show? About a year. Okay, all right. Last year. Okay, cool. You, so, you poor thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just say listen all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay, yes, yes. Fair enough. Fair so, enough. I can't remember if I put the, hit the next slide. Yeah, yeah Don't it's, it's there. Okay. Yep. So, listeners of the show who have heard Whitney and I talk. I look now. Yeah, okay. To know when about a specific, I can't remember what I put in here, it's about a specific pinball game. And it's become a signature battle cry of the show. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> what game is it? All right. It's a, it's a little further back in the catalog, so I, All I right. can understand that. You, I, you don't know? Okay. I give up. <laughs> the game was on fire. The game was on fire. What game was it? I cannot. All right. Okay. Whitney, give him the answer. What is it? It's hard body. No. <laughs> no. I don't. Well, I so am I. Cause look at that. All right. Go ahead. It's fire power. All right. So. 
You've got your choice. Oh. What's in the magic box? You can take a selection of a couple marquees to decorate your game room. Or maybe you can steal from the gentleman that had the coffee cups wherever he went. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he might not like. He's on, he's in on the coffee cups. It'd be a throwdown. It's it's um, a couple of these. You can pick two or three. I'd like to have a couple of others to give away. Or the contents of that box. Or I got a pop shop ball right there. <laughs> You want to see what's in the box? Yeah. Okay. All right. He takes the box. Open the box up. Check it out. You can't have the box. The box is mine. Genuine plastic? Plastic, yes. And actually, Tiffany Tiffany plastic and the mounting kit. Apparently, that was Wicco back in the day sold those. With the chain. With the chain and all the, and a Papa Shot ball. I think I had this when I was like eight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, congratulations. That's awesome. And now I, I, I should have known that. You should know. <laughs> well, you still made out. And you know what? Just in case, you're 700 hours of uh, AOL. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just in case you need that. All right, Whitney. Next slide. All right. So we're, I'm running. All right. So we're getting kind of close here time-wise. So I'm going to kind of roll through this pretty quick. And But this is a pretty detailed subject. So Playfield Touch-Up, if anybody wants to kind of dip into this, into this arena. Um, when I first did this, I thought there's no way in the world because I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. And I was surprised at how, how things turned out. So I would encourage anybody to, if, if they think they want to do some, some play field touch up to try this. So this is just a sample of some of the paints that I've used uh, to, to do some machines. The, the big thing is, is figuring out what colors you need. And the, the, this, the secret right here is anything and everything you can find to help match you, match a color. I don't care if it's a shirt. I have a, a paint swatch deck, like from a paint store. It's about that thick. If it's a picture out of a magazine that has a blue that's close to the blue you need, then you can take that to the hobby shop or the craft store and you can look through the selections of paints and and try to find something close okay and generally what i do is there when you get like a blue there there all the shades are lined out so i'll get the one i think i want take the cap off and look at the paint don't look at the color sticker i'll get the one i want and they're cheap they're 50 cents so i'll get a couple colors either side of the color i think i want that's why you see so much in there and then um I'll get uh, white and black so I can mix it. I can change the color a little bit. So if, is there any artists in here? Because I'm probably going to use words that make absolutely no sense to anybody with any artistic ability. Because like I said, I have... Okay, well, I'm making all this up as I go. Okay, so there, there's not just white and black. There's 50 whites and 50 blacks and there's different from different vendors and different shades. So I take a selection so that I've got the ability to change the, the base color quite a bit. Um, and then, like I said, here's a tip here. I put the paint color on the bottle top so that later I've got a quick reference for the actual color. Hit us, Whitney. Oh, these are all acrylics. Yeah. Do you have a color chart on the site somewhere that says, hey, you're doing this machine, here's your color? Oh, because there's not one color that I used right out of the bottle on any machine. I've, I've not gotten that lucky. You know, I use my luck for stupid stuff, not like this, you know. So what I do is I'll cut some clear rectangles out of Plex, and I'll put all my samples uh, on, that cl on those clear pieces of Plex. And then you can get these little palettes inexpensively at a lot of craft stores, and we'll, I'll use those to mix, mix colors. So I'll go ahead and hit the next slide, Whitney. I can lay those color chips on the play field and get a color match, okay? So the color is on the top. You don't want to flip it over and have the color on the bottom because when you look through the plex, it'll reflect the, refract the light differently and it will change the color that's painted on the plex. So I'll use that to get a close match and then I'll mix. And it's there's no science to this unless maybe an artist has some background. It, you just... This is patience, but it pays off. All right. So usually I'll I'll add. Okay. Well, I'm between this color and that color, so I'll mix those two colors, and it's all by feel. All right. When you hit the next one. Okay. Well, let me let me touch on that. 
didn't realize I didn't have a slide in there. So what I'll do is once I make my mix, I'll have an empty piece of Plex, just a blank piece, and I'll paint it on there and I'll take a hair dryer and dry it. And then I'll take that back over to the machine and lay it on the machine in good light and see if it matches. And if it matches, I know I'm good. And if I need to adjust it, I can adjust it. Quick tip, if you're doing a round like uh, uh, inserts, turn the light on or put a flashlight underneath it, turn the game on because the insert, it may look okay, but when you turn the light on, you may realize that you've got a little crack around the insert where it, it's in the wood and you don't know that you actually need to fill that. So, all right, so once you've got your touch-up done, you've got to seal it because those craft paints, they're not very strong. If you make a mistake, you can take some mineral spirits or naphtha and uh, I use naphtha, you can just wipe it right off the play field. It won't hurt the play field. Test it somewhere before you go Brent Griffith said it won't hurt the play field. Test it somewhere like some of the art, the sample registry art under the apron that nobody sees, but you can wipe it off. The ball will just beat it, beat it to death and it won't last for a few games. So you've got to seal it in. And this is what, after all of my research, seems to be what everybody else uses and this is what I use and had good luck with it. It's actually made by Rustoleum. I think Verathane was a, I can't remember if that was a company or just the product name, but it comes from Rustoleum. Here's our part numbers and if you all want these, email us or take a picture of this with your, with we'll, your we'll, smartphones. We'll have the entire slide deck published as a PDF and probably by the end of next week I'll get some time and I'll put it up on the website and then you guys, there'll be a blog post, just go and download it. So yeah, that, that'll make it a lot easier on everybody. See, I just do it in notes and I'd mail it to you. <laughs> Gosh, Edsel, gotta, I'm telling you, print it's an all these it's pictures. It's pink Edsel too. It's a pink Edsel. Print all these pictures. Oh, okay. So what I do, and, and admittedly, I haven't done a whole play field and I'm working up myself up to that, but I'm doing spot fixes. And what I'll do is I'll mask up to the key lines. And what the key lines are, are those black lines around that separate all your bits of art. So if you like look at an insert, you've got the art in it and there's a black ring around it. That's a key line. So like on the Adams family, when I did the mansion, there's a black line all the way around the mansion. So I masked all the way around the mansion and uh, I cleared it. So I'll, cl I'll do three coats. You go to a hobby shop and get super fine sandpaper, like several thousand grit. Clear it, let it dry, buff it down, give it a little sand, clear it again, buff it, sand it, clear it again. You know, so I'll do three coats. I've never tried it, honestly. Yeah. I've never tried it. Oh, yeah, it will leave a little something behind. So, I've, I just, honestly, I've never tried it. I've just gotten really fine sandpaper from a hobby shop. So, brushes. I got this selection of brushes. I'm like, I'm not sure what I'll need. The fine tip brushes, honestly, is where I've spent my most time, like this little brush hanging out here, these guys right there. I've, those have been no use to me. So a couple relatively nice fine tip brushes. We're not paint, we're not fixing the Mona Lisa, but you get great results from this stuff, okay? And for the clear, for the, the poly, foam brushes. So if we got a big space, well, I'll use one of those wide brushes. Practice on something because what will drive you crazy is you'll, you'll see these little tracks, these little lines, and you want nice and thin, but you want consistent. And as it dries, it will self-level, okay? So the uh, little circular jobbies down here, I think they're called spouncers. This was something like, I don't know what, I found these, I, don't, I was like, I don't know what to call these. I don't know anything about this stuff. Well, I, I found another pack at Walmart and had the name on it. Now that I had the name, I'm in. You know, you can Google those. I use the little round ones for inserts. So like if I'll fix an insert, I can take that little round bouncer and just go right around it. Don't even have to, don't even have to uh, tape it. Right around it, seal it up, and then go through the process. 
I'd say get your brushes at Michael's. You can always catch them with a coupon, and the quality is so good compared to what you'd find at Walmart or Harbor Freight. But yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ho definite hobby or, hobby or lobby. craft shop. Hobby yeah, lobby we have a Michael's. Hobby Lobby close by. Otherwise, so. the bristles, I mean, after one or two times of you know application cleaning, the bristles just come out, and you're left with frustration. When you're doing, go ahead, next slide, Whitney. When you're doing the touch-ups, you can just use water to clean them. And then... Uh, some some of the more artistic people may know my understanding is you don't want to use hot water because it will actually does weaken the glue that holds the bristles in the brush you just use cold water and a little hand soap and clean them out so all right here's just some quick examples this is the adams family uh vault and bookcase when i got the game there was a big chip and right here on the edge of the bookcase and there's a cliffy in here so it's protecting you know the the edge it's a little worn so i did put a cliffy in there and you can just barely see just the edge of where the joint is so that one was fun i had to match three colors i started with the gray and then i overlaid the yellow and then i put back in the, that that kind of that faux key line to give it that depth that black so that one was that one was more interesting than most so next one sir So the question is, is how, I've matched the paint, how do I keep enough of it? So the secret is, is if you're going to match, mo most games are done, you know, however many color stages. There's, only, there's, there's a handful of colors. I think, it, I think the biggest maybe before you got into the photorealistic play fields was like seven color. So you just, you say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match this gray. And then anywhere you need the gray, once you've got it matched in your tub, you'd be surprised those that little palette I had with the little depressions in it, how far that paint will go. Because you're you're not building up, you just need to recolor. Okay, I never I, I threw away more paint than than I ever used. Once I got it matched, and every okay, I need this gray. Well, everywhere I needed that gray, I'd use it. Just kind of look ahead a little bit. So here is uh, another example. This is the Adams family again in the graveyard. And this, this goes back to like cleaning and knocking some paint loose. So there's a little bare spot right there. And what would happen is the ball would run back and forth between these two pops and it started to wear a bare spot. Well, when I cleaned it, it was much larger than that. Back over here, I had to match the purple, and then this is a case where I had some of that purple down here, and it's not shown in that shot. See where this is kind of missing down here, and there's a little missing out of the leg of the, of the mausoleum? I reused that color and filled in these other spots, and then matched the black out. You know, you, you, once you find a formula for like a black that's on a game, that'll be the most common. If there's anything you're going to have to kind of remix, it'll probably be that. So, uh, and then just kind of, like I said, I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. And I had to put back several of those pickets and just kind of, you know, make it as what it is. All right. And finally, wax the puppy or that puppy. I had to get the dog in there again. She's recovering from knee surgery here. So she was being extra pampered. Uh, the wax I, please, no, don't actually wax the dogs. Or babies, Matt. I know new father, new father. Um, the wax of my choice is the Colonite 885, and this was a lot of research that I did on my part. And, and again, this is this is like a Ford versus Chevy versus Dodge truck thing. Everyone has their favorite, and everyone. Uh, I know. What did you just read? Wildcat. I know that's a wax cleaner that's been around for a long time. This is a really high carnauba wax that's used for aircraft and boats. And I thought if it if it can withstand, you know, use on an aircraft or a boat, we can knock around a pinball on it for, you know, in, in a home use situation. I've had really good luck with that. It's kind of hard to find. It's an online thing or unless you've got like a specialty, like a, a boat store or something uh, around. I love it. I've used it on every game that I've done and games some I just walk up to strangers and smear it on their games. I mean, it's awesome stuff. So I can't I can't speak uh, more highly of it. All right, Whitney. And finally, reassemble the playfield. Remember all those pictures? Well, here's where they come into good use. 
time to use them. And really, there's no science to this. And as I put here, you know, there, there, that's why there's not a lot of information here. You kind of just need to do this what feels right to you. I like to start basically from the bottom up in that I'll put my posts in. I'll start to put, uh, I'll do all the play field lamps, all the GI. You're there, like I said, everything needs to come out. Put all new lamps in, they're inexpensive. And I'll just start building up to all the layered plastics and then generally, with the way most games are, you, the ramps set on top of all of it and the bigger toys, and that's the last thing to do. Inspect your new parts. That's a brand new pinball with that chip in it. And that would have been just wonderful in my game. I had a couple pinballs out of that batch that was like that. So there's stuff, especially like um, me, uh, plastic posts. I've gotten a lot of posts that were not completely molded, so there'll be places out of them. I've had uh, coil sleeves that were deformed, the little stars that go over in rollovers. I've had those that were deformed, just the injection wasn't correct. And pop bumper parts especially, like the spoons that go in the pop bumper assembly, those are just, I'm sure they're chunked out a thousand at a time. And somehow I'm lucky enough that my lottery luck is wasted on getting that. <laughs> so any new parts, inspect them and go ahead when he hit it and i would suggest that you order extra of the really inexpensive stuff like all those little plastic parts it's, it never hurts to have extra posts around extra pop bumper parts uh, um, balls so you you've got a fallback so this is the toothpick trick and so if you're assembling and you realize you've got a stripped hole somewhere in the play field well, what are you going to do you fill it in with wood glue and toothpicks. And now this seems kind of kind of like cheating. Maybe it is, but man, it works great. I've done it several times. I've done it on video games where the like the marquee screw holes have been stripped out. Fill the wood hole uh, fill the hole with a little bit of wood glue. Uh, just dip it in there with a Q, with a Q-tip or actually with uh, with a toothpick. Stick a couple toothpicks in there and let them dry like a day. Take a flush cutter or something, cut off the excess, and Bob's your uncle. It's ready to go. So, and then tune the play field. All right, and this this is a patience thing. Take the ball and exercise everything on the play field. You've got test mode, make use of that again. Activate all your coils and all your toys, make everything move, make sure nothing binds spend time because this this is now you're into the how to play it this is if you don't get it tuned right you're not going to enjoy it make sure as you reassembled everything all the switches are working use the ball like i said to actuate everything and what this is is this is the swamp scoop on an adams family it's on the lower right side of the play field it's got two kickers in it and it's got like four switches and there's switches mounted on the side i had a problem with that game where a ball would hang in it because i had the switch misadjusted and it the game couldn't read the ball there so it would hang until it went into ball seek and kicked it out it, it took me 10 seconds to fix it but i had to play the game and look for a ball trap to, to find it and so you'll find that just play the game and see where balls are getting hung up what needs adjustment I've had situations like in the subway on the Adams family where I had a washer in the wrong place and the ball would get wedged between the subway and the play field it was done had to open it up and take it all apart so don't uh, don't do like I do and wait to the last minute before a party and try to run the last screws in a game because yeah it didn't work out and then bask in your glory. You know, you put, you spent all this time uh, working on the game, and it's going to be a beautiful game when you're done. Enjoy it. Hit it, Whitney. I mean, bask. I mean, that's a lot of work. But it's work. Like I said, it's worth it. When you when you shop a game, not only is it beautiful, it plays like you wouldn't believe. I've had folks come to the house and play some of my games, and. Um, this this sounds a little self-serving, but I, I get compliments on how well the games play. Again, I'm a pretty particular person, but I'll go through and I'll do all that tuning work. And it, it, it pays off. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, 
we're a few minutes over, there's all of our contact information, and for those dial-up users, we're finally supporting 56 KB. So we would love to see you on our BBS. Yeah, and like we say, we'll, we'll have the presentation up on our website, so you can just download it as a PDF. So, yeah, we certainly appreciate everybody uh, staying with us. We, we ran over like 10 like, minutes, so yeah, like yep, 10 minutes. we apologize for that. But Whitney, how do I give away these, some marquees in this Papa Shop ball? Uh, you you give them away. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do something fun. No, uh, they, no, does anybody here read, own a fire power? We're reading in Merry somebody Christmas. else's time. Come here. <laughs> do I see another hand? Come here. Does anybody here own a hard body? <laughs> Pick yourself a couple marquees. A couple? Yep. Folks, we really appreciate... Um, appreciate your oh just hold them up to the light we really appreciate your time if anybody has if anybody has any questions feel free to reach out to us catch us after if you enjoyed this uh say something to the show staff and let them know if you didn't like it don't say anything to anybody <laughs> okay <laughs> no but we appreciate you all attending uh like i say there's our website uh and we're also on facebook uh follow us on twitter and that way you'll get the announcement when we publish the blog post that has this presentation in it does anybody have a time pilot burger time you don't count mike <laughs> Whitney, what's your... F yeah, and, uh, and yeah, we've got t-shirts up here if anybody wants to buy a t-shirt, support the show. I mean, the one thing that Brent and I have done, we've been we've been doing our podcast for just a hair over three years. We do no advertising and we do uh, no sponsorships because the one thing that we do not like is to listen to commercials and we don't like to inundate people with uh, stuff like that. Okay, here, here, so Mike, the way here. that we support the show, here's, here's the way that we support our show is at shows like this. So if you want to buy a t-shirt, uh, support the show, we'd certainly appreciate it. We've got some up here for sale, I, but awesome. Thank you all. Appreciate I, it. I, I gave Mike 700 hours of AOL. 700 hours of AOL? Dude, how are we going to run the website if you give away all of our AOL? <laughs> you got to think this stuff in, you got to think this stuff through, man.